Patrick, an investment banker in the concrete jungle of New York City, finds himself at a swanky dinner with his work buddies. As the night progresses, they transition to a trendy club where Patrick confidently orders a drink at the bar. But wait, things take a dark turn as Patrick suddenly starts spewing hormone-fueled insults at the bartender, even going so far as to threaten to stab her. The pounding music is so loud that the bartender remains blissfully unaware of Patrick's menacing remarks. Patrick starts his morning with a full-blown workout and a beauty regimen that would make any dermatologist proud. He takes his time with his face mask, savoring the moment when he removes it, revealing his true face. Then it's off to the office where his trusty secretary fills him in on the day's agenda. Patrick greets his secretary with a compliment on her skills and dedication, but can't resist offering some fashion advice. He suggests that she would look stunning in a nice skirt and heels to enhance her natural beauty. With the secretary off to carry out her tasks, Patrick reclines in his office and indulges in some TV time. As the day comes to a close, Patrick heads out with his fiancée to enjoy a lovely meal at a nearby restaurant. Patrick's fiancée is eager to have a serious talk about their future together, but Patrick is lost in his own world, jamming out to his headphones. After a while, he finally tunes into the conversation, only to explain that he's swamped with work and can't even think about getting married right now. Later on, at the restaurant, the couple meets up with some friends. Unfortunately, Patrick's fiancé finds herself sitting next to the very person she's been having an affair with, Patrick's friend. The sun was up, and Patrick embarked on a laundry mission with his beddings dripping with crimson red patches. The laundromat owners were unamused by the sight, and a verbal altercation ensued. Just when things were about to get out of hand, an ally came to Patrick's rescue. Taking note of the stained sheets, the concerned friend probed Patrick, demanding an explanation. However, Patrick quickly resorted to a tall tale, claiming that the blotches were nothing but remnants of his favorite cranberry juice. With a sense of urgency, Patrick departs in haste, scurrying back home to dial Courtney's number. Unfortunately, Courtney's response was a polite decline, but in the background, some adult entertainment on the telly distracted him. After some coaxing, Patrick manages to change Courtney's mind with his silver tongue, dishing out a fib about having snagged a table at the city's most sought-after eatery, Dorcia. As dusk descends, Patrick and Courtney rendezvous for their evening together. The cab ride with Courtney was quite a snooze fest, thanks to her concoction of antidepressants. She dozed off mid-conversation and eventually woke up in a restaurant, courtesy of Patrick's tall tale about their location. In her dazed and confused state, Courtney swallowed the lie hook, line, and sinker. The morning after, Louis expressed gratitude to Patrick for looking after Courtney the previous night. Louis admires Patrick's dapper suit, but when he reaches out to touch the fabric, Patrick's reflexes kick in, and he swats Louis hand away. Just then, another colleague, Paul, shows up, confusing Patrick for Marcus. Never one to miss a beat, Patrick decides to play along and becomes Marcus for the day. As more co-workers join in, the room turns into a business card bonanza, with everyone comparing cards like they were Pokémon. As soon as Paul flashes his card, Patrick's face twists into a knot of envy and frustration. But, with the grace of a swan, he manages to conceal his vexation. Later that evening, Patrick ventures into a dimly lit alley in the city where he stumbles upon a destitute man. Though Patrick belittles the man with a stream of insults, he eventually offers him a helping hand. However, much to Patrick's dismay, the man rejects his generous offer and decides to take matters into his own hands. In a fit of rage, he brandishes a knife and plunges it into the poor man. Not content with this gruesome act, Patrick proceeds to kick the man's dog a few more times before making his exit. The next day, Patrick decides to hit the spa to unwind before his upcoming Christmas celebration with his better half. As he luxuriates in the calming water, he ruminates on his ever-growing bloodthirst and worries about his sanity slipping away. It's party time for Patrick and his lovely fiancé. As they arrive at the event, Patrick bumps into Paul who confuses him with Marcus yet again. Rather than correcting Paul, Patrick decides to play along and extends an invitation for dinner. Paul happily agrees, but before they can continue their conversation, Paul's fiancé makes an appearance and overhears their chat. Curiosity piqued, she asks Patrick why Paul keeps calling him Marcus. To steer the conversation away from touchy subjects, Patrick plants a quick smooch on his partner's lips. After a while, he gets to dine with Paul at a dingy restaurant, which is suspiciously deserted. Upon arrival, Patrick discovers Paul's engaging in a heated argument with a waiter. As they indulge in small talk, Paul downs drink after drink, steadily getting sloshed. As the night progresses and Paul's inhibitions loosen, Patrick decides to make a bold confession he's positively insane. In a drunken stupor, Paul dismisses Patrick's confession as gibberish. Later, they both head over to Patrick's pad, which, to Paul's surprise, is chock full of newspapers. 
While Paul happily continues his liquid journey on the sofa, Patrick puts on some tunes. Patrick slips into a plastic raincoat as he heads towards his bedroom. Patrick twirls his way back to the living room, axe in hand, as Paul poses the age-old question why are there newspapers covering every square inch of the apartment? And, more pressingly, why the heck is Patrick wearing a raincoat indoors? Without warning, Patrick raises the axe and drives it into Paul's skull. The room echoes with Patrick's rage-filled screams as he continues to hack away at the lifeless corpse before him. After Patrick's rampage comes to an end, he takes a deep breath and relaxes. He tosses aside the raincoat and lights up a cigar to unwind. Then, he heads out with Paul's lifeless body in tow, stuffed into a handy bag. As he flags down a cab, he has an unexpected run-in with Louis and a pal, but he quickly brushes them off and shoves the bag into the trunk. From there, he makes a beeline to Paul's pad, where he uses the keys he swiped to gain entry. Patrick springs into action and begins packing a suitcase with some of Paul's duds. To throw anyone off the scent of Paul's disappearance, he hops on the answering machine and leaves a message, pretending to be Paul himself. He blabs about heading off to London for a bit, which should buy him some time. Once that's out of the way, he disposes of the body, and all seems well. However, the next day at work, Patrick's secretary bursts in with a doozy of an announcement a detective wants to have a word about Paul's whereabouts. The detective strolls in while Patrick tries to play it cool, faking a phone call. Eventually, he hangs up and turns his attention to the detective's question. The detective grills him about Paul's disappearance, but Patrick plays dumb, insisting he has no idea what happened to him. Feeling a bit more at ease, Patrick probes the detective for any updates, and to his surprise, the detective shares that Paul has supposedly been spotted across the pond in London. However, the detective quickly adds that the lead turned out to be a dead end. Patrick breathes a small sigh of relief but still feels uneasy about the whole ordeal. He politely tells the detective he needs to wrap things up as he has a meeting coming up shortly. Once the detective leaves, Patrick heads back to his apartment to blow off some steam with a workout. Later that evening, he cruises around the city, eventually stopping on a dimly lit street corner where he picks up a certain lady of the night. While driving back to his apartment, Patrick decides to call up another companion to join in on the fun. Upon their arrival, Patrick introduces himself as Paul and the three of them kick back in the living room for some quality time. As the night progresses, they eventually move into the bedroom where Patrick takes out his trusty video camera. He starts directing the girls to engage in some adult games and they proceed to play. Patrick enthusiastically jumps into the game, admiring his own hormonal performance in the mirror and for the camera. Once the game ends, the two women collapse on Patrick's bed, exhausted. However, Patrick is not done yet. He gets up, opens a drawer filled with an assortment of torture tools, and the women wake up and beg to leave. Unfortunately for them, Patrick has other plans. Patrick delights in demonstrating his torture skills to the two women, but they soon run off with their earnings. The next day, Patrick and his colleagues hang out at a restaurant when Louis drops by with his brand new fancy business card. Comparing it to his own shabby one, Patrick feels a pang of irritation. As soon as Louis enters the restroom, Patrick follows suit. While Louis is busy with his personal business, Patrick creeps up behind him and starts choking him. However, Louis misunderstands this as a weird form of flirting. Louis confesses his love for Patrick, stating that he's been smitten with him for ages. Patrick is taken aback and disgusted by Louis' revelation. In a state of panic, Patrick bolts out of the restaurant and rushes to wash his hands. He can't bear the thought of Louis' misunderstanding. The next day, the detective pays a visit to Patrick at his office, and the topic of conversation turns once again to Paul's disappearance. The detective probes, where were you on the night Paul went missing? Patrick coolly responds that he was out on a date. The detective confronted Patrick with some unsettling news that his alibi didn't quite align with what he had heard. Patrick immediately acknowledged his lapse in recollection, and extended an invitation for the detective to join him for lunch at a more convenient time. Later in the day, Patrick met with Courtney and spent some quality time together. As the night progressed, Patrick and his colleagues decided to hit the club to unwind and have some fun. Sitting at the table with three models, Patrick strikes up a conversation with one of them. As they talk, Patrick mentions that he deals with murders and executions. Unfortunately, the model mishears him and thinks he's in mergers and acquisitions. Despite the misunderstanding, they end up going home together. However, things take a dark turn, and Patrick ends up murdering her as well. In a classic Patrick move, he asks his secretary out on a date, and to his delight, she agrees. Patrick, eager to impress her, tries to make a reservation at the fancy restaurant, Dorst, but is promptly rejected. However, he lies to his secretary, and claims that he was able to secure a reservation to appear more sophisticated. He invites her over to his apartment before their dinner reservation. 
As they chat, Patrick reaches for a roll of duct tape, but ends up grabbing a nail gun from the closet. He stands behind the secretary and aims the gun at her head. Just as he is about to pull the trigger, his fiancé's message plays on the answering machine, interrupting him. As they were chatting, the secretary suddenly remembers that Patrick is already engaged to someone else and decides to leave. The next day, Patrick meets with the detective for lunch, and they discuss the investigation into Paul's disappearance. The detective informs Patrick that Paul had dined with Marcus, the same person Patrick had posed at first, Patrick feels anxious, but he calms down as the detective assures him that he is no longer considered a suspect in the case. That evening, Patrick tries to convince the prostitute from earlier to come back with him. Despite her initial hesitance, she eventually agrees after Patrick promises things will be different this time. Patrick brings her back to his place, where he also finds another woman. Later, he brings both women to Paul's apartment, slipping drugs into their drinks to make them more pliable. After drinking wine, they all engage in a playful game of intimacy to explore their desires. As Patrick gets intimate with one woman, the prostitute tries to make a discreet exit. But in a sudden turn of events, Patrick ends up killing the other woman, leaving the prostitute horrified as she witnesses him covered in blood. As she tries to make a quick exit, she stumbles upon the gruesome sight of Patrick's other victims. In a panic, she tries to escape, but Patrick pursues her with a menacing chainsaw. Despite her efforts to flee, Patrick drops the chainsaw from above and puts an end to her life. After breaking up with his fiance, Patrick stumbles upon a stray cat while withdrawing cash from an ATM. In a surreal moment, he imagines the ATM instructing him to feed the cat into the machine. He pulls out a gun and aims it at the cat, but a bystander intervenes and prevents him from harming the innocent animal. However, in a fit of rage, Patrick shoots the good Samaritan instead. In an intense turn of events, Patrick finds himself in a police chase after shooting a passerby. During the pursuit, Patrick proves to be quite the problem solver, managing to blow up police cars and even shoot some of the officers. After escaping the chase, he heads to his office where he greets the doorman with a fatal gunshot. Not stopping there, Patrick also takes out the night shift janitor. However, his escape plan takes a detour when he realizes he needs to use a different entrance to exit the building. In this instance, Patrick remains composed and registers through the lobby. Once inside his office, he conceals himself, but is on the verge of being spotted by a helicopter flying by. With limited options, Patrick succumbs and contacts his attorney. During the conversation, Patrick admits to murdering Paul and around 20 to 40 additional individuals, revealing that he has even consumed their brains or cooked some of their body parts. Patrick divulges the name of the restaurant where he may be reachable the following day. The next day, Patrick makes his way to Paul's place. He's fully masked up like a ninja, but upon entering, he's shocked to find the joint deserted. The walls are freshly painted, giving it that sleek minimalist vibe. But it's clear there's no sign of any wrongdoing. Patrick's CSI skills kick in, and he scours the place for clues, but nothing turns up. Just as he's about to lose his mind, a realtor waltzes in, hoping to close a deal. The two engage in a heated discussion, but the realtor finally drops the bombshell and orders Patrick to hit the road and never look back. Now Patrick's left scratching his head, wondering if he's been caught in the act. In a state of panic, he scurries over to a payphone and frantically rings up his secretary for assistance. But when she tries to get the scoop on what's wrong, Patrick flips out and starts hurling insults at her and tells her to leave him alone. Worried sick about Patrick's erratic conduct, his secretary decides to play detective and sneaks into his office to see what's up. She rifles through his drawers and stumbles upon Patrick's journal. As she flips through its pages, she's greeted with a gruesome gallery of illustrations depicting Patrick's heinous crimes. Meanwhile, Patrick makes his way to the restaurant to rendezvous with his colleague. As he scopes out the joint, he spots his lawyer and decides to have a word with him. But as luck would have it, Patrick gets mistaken for someone else. Again. And when he decides to come clean about his sordid past, his confession gets shrugged off and laughed at like it's all one big joke. Finally, when Patrick sets the record straight and insists that his crimes are the real deal, his lawyer tells him to cut the crap. Patrick tries to plead his case and insists that he really did off Paul. But his lawyer quickly shuts him down, arguing that this can't be the case since he just had dinner with Paul in London a mere 10 days ago. Now Patrick's left dumbfounded, unsure whether his murders actually happened or if they were all just a figment of his twisted imagination. Patrick's descent into madness is now complete, and he's completely lost his grip on reality. He drags himself back to the table and tries to blend in with his co-workers, but he can't help but dwell on his alleged imaginary murders. In hindsight, he now regrets never getting busted since it's left him just another face in the crowd, someone who can easily be brushed aside or mixed up with someone else. 
And that's a wrap for today's episode of Cinematic Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed our journey through the story of this film. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more movie narrations. Until next time, this is Cinematic Chronicles signing off.